So this is just clean water and I'm just giving the paper a good soaking all the way over. Then I'm going to go the raw sienna, these are in crimson, and just brush that all the way down to the bottom of the page. A bit haphazardly, no real pattern to any of it. Clean the brush, get a ultramarine, Payne's grey. that in from the sides. But what I am doing is trying to preserve a lighter area down the middle. These darks will make it look even lighter. Bit of a lizard in crimson, Payne's grey. Push a bit more in, see how it gets really dark now. Ultra ultramarine. Thanks, Brian. Just brushing that in from the bottom. You can see how we've got this sort of nice light area down the middle, nice dramatic light effect. And light, capturing light really is what it's all about at the end of the day. Just soaking up, seeing little bits falling down, just very, very, I'm hardly touching it, just the very tips. Just as I'm looking at the bits of water coming down the page. And then maybe go a bit darker. Pines grey, ultramarine. And then think about popping a few little clouds in there and there. Some big ones up there, and then that will get smaller and smaller as that will go off over to the horizon. And take out a bit of tissue, pop some white clouds in. In there. Obviously you've got to get this in before the paint dries. The more it's dry the, the harder it will be to take off. Also the uh, the dirtier tissue is it'll be to bring it off clean you obviously need a nice clean bit of tissue. I've got a bit of everything on this. Before I completely overdo it, it will be up there as well. That'll do. You see now, it's not soft enough now, you can just about start to see the sharp edges, so it's that's about as much as I can do now. It's getting too dry, so I'm just gonna. Pull it tight because it's stretched lightly. And unless you want it to dry it all over and then re wet it and carry out, I mean, that's a great way. If you're not very happy with what you've achieved at this stage, just dry it, re wet it, and then just carry on. It gets some very nice effects, more sort of depth to the whole thing. I'm quite happy with that, so I'm going to leave that. And then I'm going to not clean the brush, leave all the sky colours on the brush, and I'm going to put in. What I will do is just dip the very tips into the water, just to dilute it down a bit. And I'm going to put in some distant hills, like a peak, a bit more of a peak, like that, and then it comes round a bit like that, and then it goes off, something like that. That's the most distant part of the land. All in the same tone, no real detail at this sort of distance. So that's that, and then as we come forward, I'm just going to go a bit of raw sienna, maybe a touch of burnt umber, and a tad of ultramarine, and then this is the next layer going on. And it's going to come down there like that, and you can see how much stronger that is. Sienna. across that side. Maybe you should 
touch of a touch of green, add a bit of lemon yellow to it. Sienna, that on batter to that ultramarine. Let's just darken that. See that nice dark and light contrast. A bit dark on this side as well. I've got the right in there, a few trees, so it is lemon yellow. Pine's grey, nice really dark greeny colour. And they sort of start up there like that. Just using the corner of the brush, really strong mix, not much water, plenty of paint. And sort of up the side of the mountain, you see how that's contrasting nicely against the light tones in the distance. few more trees on this side as well. Just darken this up again a bit more. Let's take our card. Side as well. Just breaks up this darker area. Just have a big in there, I think. Mean. That looks a bit closer than that one now. That, that looks a bit very, very similar. Um, switch to the rigger. And I'm doing a bit more water. Same sky colours. I'm just gonna just wondering where to put the birds. Let's see what it looks like with the uh, mains on it. So with the mains, I've got to be like the first thing that jumps out at me is I don't like the rocks. I think I could have done a better job with those. They just don't look right. But I do like the uh, the sort of sense of light. You see how I've got the advantage of darkening the sides and sort of keeping the light down the middle. So the sky was a mix of a uh, sort of raw sienna, um, lizard and crimson, and then the darker areas were put in with Payne's grey and ultramarine. Bit of tissue work, dabbing out a few clouds here and there. And obviously they get narrower and narrower as they go off into the distance. When I put in the distant land, all I did was 
I still had all the sky colours on the brush and I just dipped the tips into the water just to dilute it right down and then put them in all, all one tone, no detail in that sort of distance and you can see the nice contrast when you go really dark into the sort of middle ground trees they are putting them in really dark it pushes that distant land back even further and then the darker trees into the sort of lighter central area we've got more darks on this right hand side coming right into the foreground tried to break it up a bit with the rocks could have done a better job with that I think yeah nice contrast with the, uh, the sort of lighter land here the green and the dark silhouetted tree line a few more rocks on this side again don't look quite right but Dark trees again, not contrasting quite as nice. You see the difference there when you get similarish tones, the foreground trees and the further land. The difference in contrast between their distant land and these middle ground trees, putting really dark against the lighter tone in the background. Well, thanks for watching. Keep practicing. If you'd like to bid on this, you'll see it in my eBay store. Uh, uh, Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.